Okay, we're back here live at HP Discover in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. My co-host is Jeff Frick on this episode. Our, our next guest is our first CUBE person that's ever been inside the CUBE from Harvard, Massachusetts, besides Dave Vellante. <laughs> so, Dave Vellante, my other co-host uh, uh, of the CUBE, is from Harvard, Mass. And, and our next guest is Patricia uh, Wilkie from Harvard, Mass. But you're also Director of Strategy and Cloud Services in the Enterprise. Welcome to the CUBE. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank welcome. you. I feel like I know where you live because I've been there a few times and it's just a beautiful area in Harvard, Mass. Um, well, well, next time, let's do this live from Harvard. <laughs> um, so, um, What's going on? We just had Antonio Neri on talking about more of the technical services. Um, obviously, in the you know in your world, you're talking about large engagements, large um, cloud type scope. What's the what's the situation? What's going on in your world? And then we can talk about some use cases of what's trending in the in the market and solutions. Sure, great. Well, obviously, uh, from an enterprise perspective, we talk about security. Uh, our customers have been adopting, but slowly, have been testing uh, primarily in the test dev environment but now it's beyond the test step. They've played with that for the last 18 months. Now how quickly can I take advantage? How can I get to the market faster? Still controlling costs, but how can you help me where my internal customer is demanding that I have a server environment or infrastructure live within a day versus three months? How can you help me do that while keeping my compliance, my sovereignty, my regulation requirements all in line and in check? So that's what we're driving to every day, giving our customers choice, whether they have an, a workload or an application that can go to a public cloud, or on that extreme where it's got to stay in a very secure private environment, or midway in what we call a virtual private cli uh, cloud so that they can have the benefits of that bursting, but yet have some control in their security model. So I, want, I got to ask you about some of the emerging uh, trends because okay. you do strategy, so you have to watch the chessboard, so to speak, in the industry as well as manage the kind of the installed base of the battle, the battleships and the aircraft carriers of HP. You know, the big, big deployments. OpenStack has hit the scene pretty heavily uh, for the enterprise, mainly because it feels like a warm blanket, has a lot of compliance kind of capabilities, modular programming is software driven, it's open source. HP's also been a big part of that, uh, formation, governance of that. Um, but there's been some successful companies that have been backing the OpenStack truck up, like Mirantis, uh, it's doing very, very well, just dropping out prefabricated OpenStack. Is that something that you guys are doing, and how do you look at that market? Is it a flash in the pan? Obviously, HP's behind OpenStack. We heard Greg Nunez mention it, uh, and I wrote that up in my Forbes article today. Um, what is that environment? How does that affect you guys? Is it on your radar? Absolutely, um, it, it's, it's an underlying theme of our HP strategy, and that's what we call the converged cloud. So whether our customers are in that private, or the public, or the virtual model, we're taking OpenStack to make sure it's aligned and tied into every one of our environments. So that whether it's an API connection or it's actually architecture around that OpenStack, we're giving our customers the flexibility to choose what they need, when they need, taking advantage. So they're not tied down to one environment, one piece, but they can get the leverageability of that OpenStack across. So you'll see that, you'll continue to hear that, especially over the next few weeks. So there's demand there. You're there seeing. is very high demand. It's a differentiator, right? How, do, how does an enterprise or a government okay. take advantage of those tools and be able to take and create something that goes to more than just one app? go across a multiple Just a quick programming note uh, for the folks watching here, interested in OpenStack, we did, Jeff and I were co-hosting, we co-host three days in Portland, so go to SiliconANGLE's channel on YouTube. We have a lot of interviews from OpenStack, it was really heavy duty developer uh, focused, a lot of signal, not a lot of noise. We had the big companies there, you guys were there, obviously Rackspace, so some really good videos, go to the SiliconANGLE channel. Um, so just quick, I want to just get that plug in there because we were the only good resources. <laughs> so Patty, talk a little bit about how Shadow IT and the availability for people to get very quick resources on demand with a credit card uh, in a short period of time has impacted internal IT's uh, kind of customer service attitude and for them to be able to compete, not purely technologically, but really more as a ser an internal service provider to have to perform at a level of service that probably wasn't there before. Great point, it really comes back to IT as a service, right? Everyone's talking software as a service, information platform, but really what our internal customers are looking for is that IT comes as a service model to them. So what are we looking at again is how can I take advantage and get my application out the door that much quicker? How can I help my end user who might be using some of these public cloud domains and sharing data that maybe an enterprise 
or a, a company are not ready to share out there publicly, how do you get those controls? So what we're seeing in the enterprise side is putting a governance model, taking advantage of that and really looking at the workload, the application, the security, the business process, and aligning that to design and take advantage where it can of these different cloud models. So are, are they just running around and finding little mushrooms <laughs> under, under covers here, there, and everywhere as they start this process? Or usually is there maybe one big thing that either really drove home the, the point of the value or that we missed this or, oh my God, there's a hole here that we're really concerned about. I mean, what are some of the things you run into as you help sure. customers down this journey as, as has been discussed? Well, it, it comes in two, two ways. There are certain enterprises who are adopting and taking a flavor of cloud in their strategy every day. And what we see is kind of two, two camps on there. There are the very core applications, the SAP, the Oracle, things that are running their core business processes that go with horizontal. And then there are the various apps. It might be a customer facing app. It might be a sales app. So different tools that might have a, an option to go to a cloud much quicker or a different level. So what we're seeing that comes into play is the governance model around that. And the governance um, and security requirements help make a decision around that data or that app that's running the data and where it can go, what workload, what makes sense. And that's where we're seeing our, our whether it's a CIO or COO or a chief security officer in there, they're making those decisions coming together around that data and the risk of how that data can flow in or outside of their so the whole outsourcing world has changed over the past years. I mean, in the old days, the I call it the gravy train of deployments, SAP, Oracle, months, a lot Correct. of money being made. Um, now acceleration of time to value is really top of the conversation. Um, so how is cloud and mobile and, and data, the, the, those new architectures, how does that change your conversations? Um, in terms of, can you just share some insight into timetables, just order of magnitude, weeks, months, we hear thing, things like big data, you know, query takes you know, 15 minutes versus 15 weeks, as, as an example. But like in terms of going in and getting your arms around customers, uh, solutions and infrastructure, I mean, it's big projects. It can is. You, can, can you do an old way, new way, kind of where we were, <laughs> kind of like, kind of compare and contrast, just to give the folks a, a sense of the order of magnitude? Well, one, I'd say I wish it was that black and white, <laughs> that you could just go from one to the other, but not necessarily. But what, what comes into play around those models, again, comes back to where, um, what a core application that's impacting a, an environment horizontally even if it's going to the cloud, it's the workflow, it's the business process that's going to be impacted. So you can't just turn the cloud on and say, hey, it's great, uh, all my apps are working. And then the other piece is, how are those apps interacting with the rest of the environment? Right? You still might have an HR tool that has to tie to the finance tool, that has to tie to the database where that information flows. So you it's now are, stored on Flash, which is now addressable by the big data exactly. application. Exactly, <laughs> so, so there's different aspects that you can get quicker. Let's go to mobile. Mobile is where right, you are bringing um, employees who live and breathe in a consumer world every day. They want to be in the enterprise. Yeah. So how can we help them there, get there quicker? Well, these are some things you can do quick. You can say, give me that instant message access and a corporate model across any device quickly. That you can do in a matter of weeks. Um, whereas in the past, that was typically a month, months that you would go through that process. Or let's go to sharing uh, files with each other. Right? Everybody at home would take video clips or whatnot and would go into a public domain and share that. But it's a different model when you have you know, your research and development data, your IP of your company, you're not ready to do that. But now, today, so the answer is, it you depends. can do it quick. So the answer is it depends. <laughs> it does, and that's where I go to, it depends on the use case. Yeah. The use case of the data and the processes around that, how quick you can go. So, okay, so my next question then, just to kind of go, go down that road a little bit in a different direction. Uh, let's talk about the history, looking back, looking in the okay. rearview mirror. IT for the past decade or so has been cut to the bone, do more with less outsource, get rid of help desk first, and all kinds of other outsourcing capabilities, which got cost down, right? Correct. And then server consolidation hits, that's kind of going on. There's always cost pressures, as Donna Telly points out. So now we're in an era of exploding value propositions, cloud, big data. That's right. So now, everyone's kind of like anemic, so to speak. They're kind of down to the bone, not a lot of muscle, a lot of dependencies on outsourcing. Now the CIO and the business line managers are saying, I need top line growth which is now throttle investment, right? So, pile of money comes in. How does that, 
put pressure on you guys and the companies? What trends do you see? One, do you believe that to be happening? Uh, and two, what does customers, what do they do? I mean, I mean, they got to call somebody, I mean, they call you guys, obviously, but like, what goes on? Take us through a day in the life of that kind of okay. scenario. So two things, one, I'll say I have not seen the big throttle open door of investments in IT that, that we hope would be there. Shoot. It is, you know, if I put my old hat on when I used to be a CFO, it's show me the business case. All right, so we've seen the control in those budgets over the yeah. past year. Now, yeah. give me the innovation in the within the budget that I've got to live. And that's where our customers are coming and they're expecting us. Yeah. Existing customers, I trust you, HP. I've been outsourcing with you for five, 10, 20 years. Now help me get there quicker. I know that you're always behind the scene taking care of things, but I'm hearing I can get there even faster. So How do I generate revenue quicker in this new cloud model versus something that might take me a month to do? How can I do it in a day? So you're saying, so if I understand this correctly, there's not so much, hey, there's a, you know, drinking from the trough of, you know, you know, you know drunken sailor kind of mentality, but more of, a lot of really kind of prudent proof of concepts, kind of understanding what the investment could be. Exactly. So they're trying to figure that out. They're, they're, they're with that, but then again, it goes back to where can I make the, the quickest impact? With, uh, with the limited yeah. dollars I have, what can I do now? We see a lot of that with Hadoop, and we just had Antonio Neri on saying that this more production deployments are rolling out on Hadoop than ever before. Um, so what's your take on Haven? Are you involved, and do you take a brief look at that? I sure. specifically am not, but our, our teams do. Okay. And, and whether it's looking from any any data point, right? It's how do you drive and bring that together um, across. So the big data concept and where our customers are going, it becomes, from a strategy perspective, we tie in every day. So let's talk strategy. Strategy is okay. always about the chessboard, right? So yes. what do you see in the landscape of the industry? What are the things that what are the things that you're watching that are that are that are variables that are still haven't been formed that are disruptive? yet enabling, enabling technologies or market forces. What are you, what are you looking at? So today it continues and, and we see this in, in you know, everyday interactions with our customers, they're working on their strategies, is globalization. It continues to come in around that data. How do I do reach more, right? How do I get more of my end customer out there? I have to look beyond just the city, the town, the region, the country I'm in. So I want to take the technology to enable that across borders, across tax laws, country laws, HR rules, et cetera. So that's where we're driving a lot of how do we help our customer get there, leveraging a global footprint to take and open the doors to new markets. And how has mobile impacted globalization? Because clearly mobile is enabling a level of access and a, distrib a distribution of access that was heretofore not possible. Well, um, mo mobility drives the customer. If they're not ready, Sorry, your, your end users, your own internal employees, your customers are ready. So mobile is pushing them to the limits. So if an enterprise doesn't start to adopt those or, or sell or leverage that input or that data through the mobility, they're going to be outpaced by their competitors. So more stick okay. or carrot, do you think? I'd say it's got to be more stick. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it has to be. I'm not saying that's the way everybody is. No, no, I'm is. curious because it probably is because obviously the shadow IT was was kind of a backdoor stick that they weren't anticipating. Right. And had that had that not happened, you know, would this transformation would be? be accelerating like it is today? Exactly. Well, I mean, it's always a don't ask, don't tell us the Amazon <laughs> policy, as I always say. Um, Patricia, thanks for coming inside the cube. Really appreciate Great, director of strategy. You. My final question to end on this note is. Um, what do you expect to see this year? What's the big thing in the next 12 months when you come back on theCUBE here at HP Discover? What do, you, what do you see happening? The data and how, how companies can make revenue out of data, but align with that, the security, right? There is, with this globalization, all of our doors are open. So how do we control and protect what we believe as an enterprise or a government is our own intellectual property? Okay, this is theCUBE, Patricia Wilkie, Enterprise, Director of Enterprise uh, Services Strategy uh, for the, the, the tech, not the technical service, the services group, Enterprise Services, inside theCUBE here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE SiliconANGLE's coverage of HP Discover. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.